<laughs> Whoa, that was scary. <laughs>
and now I'm going to go over here I'll quickly turn the camera around and show you how to mount this on your gun so we'll start this just here as you can see the mounts are uh, uh, like a V shape just just here we're looking just here they're, they're cut into a little V and I'll just focus on the gun bear with me two seconds while the camera just adjusts hopefully he says there you go it's coming into focus right now these are the mounts on top of the gun just here and again they're cut in as a V shape so what you want to do is you want to slot those two V's in together he says confidently I do apologize if the videos of poor quality I've not done a video like this before so I'm in the middle of a bar barn where my trailer's kept and try my best to please subscribe us so you want to keep these screws here relatively loose so you can move the scope forward and backwards you want to get it into sort of a central location on your scope so you've got a bit of forward and backwards movements and then you want to just loosely tighten these bottom ones just there like that make sure they're in place as I say they're, they're, they're not even tight they're just nipped up at the moment I will go through and tighten them a little bit more in a minute so there's that okay so they're all a little bit tight they're not going to come off and they're not going to move they're all good but this in here is still loose I can still move this forwards and backwards as you can see and the reason I've left that like that is because now I have to get my crosshairs central now the proper scientific way or the, the not it's not even scientific the proper way of doing that would be to to find a piece of string or hang a piece of string like like what builders use for setting setting walls up and bricks you want something very straight and you can align your your, your just central post on your crosshairs uh, as straight as you can now I've done this hundreds of times and there's various other things you can use I mean just here in the barn uh, just above me there's a dead big long light leads if you will lights dangling from the roof and, and the leads very straight so I could use that as my straight uh, also you can use a piece of paper and look the wrong end through the scope put your butt on the floor through the center of a piece of paper and you can center it that way uh, I don't like doing it that way because it's very very finicky um, there's loads of other things you can use um, to, to, to straighten your scope but that is quite key you need to get that that cross in the center of your scope it needs to be I don't even know which way straight is but straight it needs to be exactly right if it's slightly out when you're dialing in your up and down you're not going to be going directly up and down you're going to be going off to an angle so you're going to be moving your zero out a little bit but I'll move the camera out a little bit and I can just show you how to get the scope right for your eye so so hopefully you can see me there and you can hear me all right we've got the scope on the gun now what we want to do is we want to balance our cheek on the cheek piece just here you want to hold it comfortably you don't want to be leaning forward or leaning backward you just want to put your head on it close both eyes open one eye the eye you look through and get the scope right forward and backward to your eye if it's too far away you'll see a circle within a circle it needs, needs, needs to come either closer forward or further away so you put it there and you just adjust it till you can see a perfect picture and then to test this you close your eye reopen it and everything should be clear through it and that's about right just there now just make sure it's straight there's some scaffolding in front of me that you'll see in a minute i'm going to line the the up and down crosshair if you will so it's so it's straight with the bars on the scaffolding zoom right out because everything's absolutely huge at the moment we don't need that and I've just moved the scope and that is about right so all I'm going to do now is just quickly nip up the screws on top and make sure all the screws are tight while I'm doing that I'll explain to you there's two more adjustments on this scope they might not be on the scope you've got not all scopes are the same but my advice for scopes is try and spend as much as you will allow I mean it's it's the bit you look through it doesn't matter how good your gun is you could have a three thousand pound gun if you've got a 20 pound eBay special scope 
the gun's going to be virtually worthless. Um, you're not going to be able to hit what you're looking at. So when you're buying a scope, just just bear that in mind. Um, you know, try and try and stretch and, and buy as much as much of a good scope as money allows. Is what I'm trying to say. Don't don't try and scrimp and save. It's it's one of the most important factors of your gun. You're only going to be able to shoot as good as your scope is. That said, you don't need to go crazy, especially with an air rifle. An air rifle, you're only going to be shooting out to 75, 80 yards maximum uh, if you're target shooting, and 35, 40 yards tops if, if, if you're hunting. Uh, 390, 40 is more than enough. So I've quickly brought you back. All I've done is off camera is just quickly tweaked these up with an Allen key. Uh, these two here, they don't need to be cranked right up. Just just tweaked up so it doesn't move. So I've tightened all four of these and I've tightened these two on the bottom on both both sides. And I just wanted to quickly show you uh, these few little adjustments that you've also got on every scope. This here is your your focus ring for your for your crosshairs. If your crosshairs are slightly blur, blurred or out of focus, usually you can twist the back end of the bit you look through and it will it will focus in your crosshairs. Now this scope is actually a, a parallax scope. What that means is you can dial in the distance from where you're shooting. So at the moment it's set to 50. I'm only shooting about 20 yards at the moment. So I can turn this ring down to about 20 yards and that will focus in the picture because although we've just fiddled with the back end of the scope and the crosshairs are going to be absolutely crisp and clear what you're looking at may not be crisp and clear and that'll be because you need to adjust the, the parallax on your scope now this can usually or well, this is usually either on the front of your scope or it's on a ring on the side of your scope just here depending on what style of scope you've got right now let's get on to zero in scope Let's show you down there. You can just see down there in the distance, there is a little white piece of card. It's about 20 yards away. I'm just going to pause the camera in a second and I'm going to count exactly how many yards it is. But you want to start off quite close. Now for an air rifle, I'm a hunter, as you, a lot of you already know, I shoot pests. Um, and I usually zero my scopes around 28 yards. My optimum sort of dispatch distance is sort of 30, 32, 33 yards. So if I zero at 38, I can come down, sorry, 28. If I zero at 28, I can come down as far as 25 and I can go up to 35 without a lot of shift. But I'll just pace it out for you. So that over there in the distance is 25 paces. Now roughly, a pace is a yard. Not a stride, a stride is more like a meter, but a pace is about a yard. So it's roughly about 22, 23 yards that. Probably do we're moving a little bit closer, which I will do, because my first initial shots will need to be closer so I can get it on the board. I will do that right now. So this is take two. I just fired a shot and realised I hadn't pressed record on the GoPro camera. So I'm going to do it again. All I said in the previous recording was make sure when you're squeezing the trigger, it's a very gentle motion. You don't want to be snatching and moving your gun every time. Also, you can see I'm actually rested on a beanbag. This is a pneumatic gun, so it doesn't have much recoil at all. So a beanbag is ideal for this. If you're using a spring rifle, you want something softer than a beanbag because this is actually quite hard. You want something like a, a pillow off your bed or a cushion or something that can absorb the recoil. Anyway, I'll press record on the GoPro this time. I'm aiming at the card that you saw just before um, and I've drawn a dot right in the middle of the card which you'll be able to see on the GoPro. I'm going to take a quick shot. It should go more or less at the same place as my first shot went uh, which is a hole in the bottom right of the card that you'll be able to see. So I'll just hit record on the GoPro. 
wait for that to start, quickly chamber the pallet, and we are recording. So I'll put the GoPro footage just down in the corner, somewhere on the screen, or maybe up in the corner, just so you can see what's going on. So I'm going to get rock steady on the little black circle that I've painted, painted, drawn, and very gently squeeze the and you can see where the hole is. It's down on the bottom right of the card. So, all I'm so here's a picture of the top turret. You can see by the arrow on the top that we need to go round to the left to dial it up. And being as we were low to the right, we do need to go up. I'm sorry about the glue on my fingers. I've been, I've been working on the trailer and, and the car, so I've got a bit of glue on me. So excuse the mucky hands. So we're going to go up. We're going to go up quite a bit because we were very low. We were about four or five inches low. So I'm going to give it a good half a turn to start off with. And I'm going to do the same on the side. Let's see if we can just get this in focus. There you go. You can see, well, we do need to come to the left. And you can see by the arrow that we need to turn this way to go to the left. I'm going to give it a good half a turn, actually a full turn on, on that side. And I, I've just put the other camera on the tripod. And I'm hoping I'm not going to shoot it, to be honest. But I'll fire a shot right now, just quickly off camera. And I'll roll in the footage from the GoPro, which is just downrange. So you could probably see by that shot that we've come up an awful lot. In fact, I'm just looking at the screen on my phone, which is transmitting the, the GoPro's footage. And we're more or less on target. We do need to come up just a fraction more and over to the left just a little bit more. I will continue here and I will keep playing in the, the, the footage. Uh, the closer I get, the less clicks I'm going to give it. Obviously, you just saw me clicking it halfway. That was because we were quite low. All I'll do now is I'll, I'll just bring it up ever so slightly and bring it into the left. I'm going to do that off camera. And I'll roll in the footage of me taking a few shots just to get it a little bit closer for you. So I've just fired three or four shots. Uh, I gave it a few too many clicks, so you'll have noticed it went past the dot. That was me aiming, bang on the dot. All I'm doing here is aiming for that same black pen dot every time. I went a little bit far, so I'm just tweaking it back a little bit now, and we're getting a fine tune. Uh, it does need to come up just a couple more clicks, and it does need to go um, to the right, maybe two or three clicks. It's very, very fine. The closer you get, the less clicks you need to do. But when you're quite far out, you'll feel it click every time you turn that turret. So I'll continue and I'll get you a little bit closer. And I'm still recording downrange, so I'll have that in the bottom and then I'll enlarge it. I'll do some wizardry or something. And it's just started raining. Brilliant! Bingo, that final shot just kissed the bottom of the black. So what I'm going to do now, being at, as I'm only still, let's see if I go over here. I'm still at 18 yards. I don't know if you can see that at all. There's the target just oh, up there. And I'm sat just there on my bench. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move further back to the optimum range that I want to be getting the final zero of this rifle. Now the further I move back, the lower the pellet is going to drop. So I am going to have to compensate by giving it a few more clicks up. But I'll show you, I'll take you along the way and show you exactly what's going on. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a fresh reflect reflective target up just to cover up most of them holes so we know where we are. Now I'm going to be aiming for the red dot right in the centre. And I'm thinking that it's going to be low. It's going to be somewhere down here because we have moved a little bit further back. So I will compensate. Look at you. I can hold that there and you can see you. Uh, I will, uh, yeah, compensate by giving it a few more clicks up and try and get it smack on so we can hit that centre bit. So what are you looking at right now? You're looking at my marker. This is where I was. And this is where I've gone to. Can you see that? Can you see the table in the distance? So I'll start walking you through. We're on about 32, 33 paces now, which is a rough, rough 30 yards. So I'll spin the camera around. And you can see the target there in the distance. You can see the GoPro 
set up next to it on the tripod. Come on camera, zoom, zoom camera. So, so oh, there we go, we can zoom right in. There you go, there's the target. It'll be a blurred mess at the moment because I've used the, the maximum zoom on the camera. And that's where we're shooting to. I'll come back to where we are. It's not far by any extreme. I mean, with live fire, you fire out to two, three, four hundred yards sometimes. So this is actually quite close, as I say, 30 yards. I try and hold the camera in front of the scope so you can see what I'm looking at. Obviously, the gun's not straight at the moment. But there you go. You can see what I'm looking at down there. You can see the kind of picture I've got. I've got it quite straight there. So I'm going to be going for that sort of picture there. If you want to see this, this really good footage and camera footage, Ted's Holdover is a good channel to subscribe to. But I will fire a few more shots. Uh, obviously I've moved out so they'll be a little bit low as I've mentioned. And I will continue giving a few more clicks on the turrets that are still uncovered just to get it spot on. And I'll catch it all on the GoPro for you. And I'll, I'll roll it in just straight after this footage. Of course I forgot to mention where's the scope the scope here i've now set to 30 yards because it was on 20 and i wasn't getting a clear focus on the target downrange so i've just tweaked it up slightly to 30 yards so now it'll be crystal clear and i can continue shooting so here we go we'll get the zero spot on now Now we're getting very, very close. We're just under the bullseye at 30 yards. Uh, I think I'm going to go another one or two clicks to the left and another two clicks up. And you'll see it gradually getting closer to that bullseye. Yeah, I think we're about there. Uh, what I'll do now is I'll uh, pause the GoPro for a start. And uh, I will go down range. I'll put a fresh target up. I'll put a full fresh, ooh, a full fresh magazine, uh, full of pellets. And I will run the full magazine at the target. And you can see exactly where the pellets are going. Um, but as far as the zero is concerned, we may need to go with the odd one click uh, left and right. I think we're about there to be perfectly honest. Right. Just had a, I had a brainwave. I'm down here at the target end. As you can see there, it's not a bad group. I've got a fresh new target to stick over that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this camera zoomed in on the target. Uh, so there will be no, no spiel, no talking. It'll just be the straight 12 shots or whatever the magazine is. I think it's a 14 shot on an FX Royal. Um, but I'll, I'll do that in good quality and I'll zoom in because obviously on the GoPro we're a little bit limited as what, what we can do. And there was, there was the GoPro just for, uh, just for reference. So, so it's actually quite close to the target. I'm quite happy I didn't shoot it, but I trust in my shooting. Right, so I'll quickly do this and then you will pick up on the targets just being there and me rattling off. I may speed it up a little bit so you can see. If it's slightly off the first couple of shots, I will give it just a fine one or two clicks but I'm thinking it's it's where it needs to be it, it's very 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 close talking right behind the camera and there's the camera all set up hopefully I'm not going to shoot at the camera because it's just below where the target should be which I'll show you right now so that's where the camera is I'm a little bit away and I will pace it out as well so we've got one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one to the muzzle of the gun. Now I'll try and set up my GoPro somewhere so you can see me. Probably won't be the best of pictures, but I'll probably roll this just underneath the actual footage of the pellet impacting. Have you got me there? You will have me there. Perfect. Let's move you this way ever so slightly. There we go. I'm just going to run up. I'm just going to run up the range and just make sure that camera's still recording and then we'll set it off.
Right, we're ready. This is the shop's guns, final zero. You'll be able to see every shot I take. I'm just going to do the full magazine till we're out. Zoom in just a little bit. That was me. Hold that one a little bit. That's better. And our target's just flown up. So, I'll take you all the way back up range. Obviously looking at my phone so I can see what I'm doing. And making sure I'm in shot. But yeah, I'll take you back up the range. Hey, if you look over here, there's my trailer. Uh, you will have seen that the target flew off towards the end there. But uh, yeah, that's the way it goes sometimes. And that camera's still recording. We can just go down to here and we can see everything as it was. Right, I'll just get a coin out of my pocket. We're recording on two cameras at the moment. This will be quite fancy. What's that? That's, that's, that's a UK 10p. I don't know what camera I'm going to be looking at now because I'm doing it with two cameras. So this is going to be a bit fun. Actually, I'll go back to that camera. So you could probably see all that just there. I just had a quick camera switch. This is a UK 10 pence piece. Oh, where's the, where's the lens? Just there. It's not going to focus on it because my face is in it and it's focused on my face. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that obviously that pellet underneath just there let me try and get you was the pellet from the previous hole but i've got all the pellets at 30 yards in a 10 pence piece now if i wanted to i could probably t have taken my time and got them a lot tighter um but yeah there's there's the target just there but um yeah i'm, I'm quite happy with that with an initial zero and that's the shotgun we always compare other guns to so uh so yeah i'll show you again that's the initial target i'll try and stick this one up this this was my zero I did pull, I think it was the second or third shot. It was an awful shot. And uh, that was me, not the gun. But there you go. Right, and that concludes this video. And that is how to slowly set up a scope. I mean, the key thing is, don't be scared. Just, just, just play with it, you'll be able to see. Now, I could go on and go further out, um, but the zero is done. The, the, the zero at the range I want but the closer I come and the further I go away from my 31 paces obviously the point of impact is going to change not dramatically at one or two paces which goes back to what I was saying at the beginning of the video um, I zero at 28 yards because I know 
at 25 and at 35, it's going to be near enough on the centre of the crosshair, and that is going to dispatch any animal humanely I point the gun at. Um, but obviously, if I were to go back further, 45, 55 yards, I would have to practice at that range and see where the impact is on the scope, um, which I highly recommend you do. But once you've got that initial zero, make sure you're at the same distance get it zeroed and practice 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 move out further move in closer know where the pellets are going to go when you're closer um, it's always worthwhile getting a range finder as well uh, it's, it's like a little laser optic that you press a button on and it gives you the yardage precisely underneath um, it's always always handy to do that until you learn your ranges um, I've been doing it that long I can kind of tell one or two yards out maybe three yards out sometimes uh, how far away I am um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, Phil Hall, this one's for you, buddy. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's clarified a few things. I hope it's explained a few things. And I hope it helps you improve your shooting and improve the zeroing of your gun. Um, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, let me know if you want to see any more videos like this or, or you know, anything else you, uh, you think I might be able to help you with. And I gladly will. Um, I'm just kind of standing here so I can point at my trailer and wave goodbye because that'll be me done for the day. Thank you very much, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye from WAUK.